it's time to check back with Samuel and James. Mzuri. James entire farm is covered in weed. Remember Dwayne Johnson from Ali and this story? The roundup weed killer James is planning to use is the cause of Johnson's cancer. Tukakuja kuku ku spray maneno ya polia eh flight eh na dudu. Sasa tukawaja atuku atuku spray ya kwekwe. Eh ndio ikakuwa unaona kwa mmekuwa msitu. Na ulipokuwa unapanda hiyo siku kwa na yeye uko na tarajia nini? Niletarajia kufuna kama kunia na sababu nilipanda ika ilikuwa kunia moja mbegu tunaona ilikuwa na tarajia karibu kunia 10 lakini sasa haiwezi saa hii haiwezi kani I return to Machakos eager to find out how Samuel's beans have fared Hey, Mr. Dome. Afternoon to you. How have you been? We've been fine oh. and uh, we're still working in the shamba. We are back. Yeah, that's so a lot has changed. Yeah, a lot has changed actually. Mm -hmm. uh, the last time you were here, the crops were not as high as they are. You can see now the beans are some beans are already mature and dry. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually we just about now to start the harvesting uh, activity. Samuel also tells me how climate change has affected him. We've received very little rain. As we talk now, the last uh, showers were in June, around 10th June. It is July now. It's almost two months. July has come to an end and it's almost two months we've not received any rain. In fact, it's a miracle that we are coming back to the shamba, I'm back to the shamba and I'm at least at least I'm able to harvest some beans. Going by the circumstances, Samuel says he'll be contented with whatever he will harvest. The advantage he has over James is that he will harvest other crops. I have a variety of foods that my family can use. I have legumes here, these are beans. I have garden peas on the other side. I have uh, green grams, I have pumpkins. With, with that kind of uh, crops, they not all can fail. And at least in a, in a situation like uh, we are in now, whereby the rains have actually failed, is that the little bit you get from the beans, you get from uh, the garden peas, you get from the pumpkins, from the maize, is able to sustain the family until the next season. You find that... Uh, when Samuel has measured success, James is disappointed despite incurring a high input cost. And since he has no produce to take to the market, I decide to focus on Samuel. I'm just about to pack some samples that I intend to take to Bridges Organic uh, Restaurant in Nairobi. Uh, see whether they can give me some order for supplying some of the farm produce that I'm producing, organic produce. When he is done packing, Samuel heads to the bus store. It will take him about an hour to Nairobi, Kenya's capital, if there will be no traffic. An hour later, Wadomi is nearing the capital city. Twenty minutes later, he enters Tubman Road along the city market. Within minutes, he reaches his destination. He is met by Anne Bogua, the founder of Bridges Organic Restaurant, the only organic restaurant in Nairobi. 
Eh, hello. Nzuri sana. Yes. Yeah. Karibu bridges. Asante sana, ni Okay. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Have you brought for us today? Mm, some uh, amaranth, some mm -hmm. pumpkin, some mm -hmm. garden peas. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where are you farming from? Na uh, Donyo Sabuk. Donyo? Yeah. Mm. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, yeah, some of this. This one that is amaranth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, terere. Mm -hmm. Then we have um, the pumpkin. Oh, okay. oh, good. Then we have uh, garden, garden peas. Oh, very nice. Is this kikuyu type? Or yeah, the kikuyu type. Okay, the type I like it. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we also have the yellow beans. Oh, good. The, the bean one. Green? Ah, okay. Yeah, the dry. Yeah. Ah, wonderful. So this ones have no chemical. You have no chemical at all, at all, at all. At all. Yeah. Pesticides yeah. and mm -mm. nothing, pesticides. nothing, nothing. I'm very grateful that uh, I've been able to meet the proprietor of uh, Bridges uh, Organic Hotel and uh, restaurant. And uh, we've talked, and I think this is the start of a partnership that will also see my farming grow and her business grow. And. That is the way to go. Actually, we need to eat healthy and we all need to farm healthy. It was uh, nice to meet Mr. Atombe and I'm excited because he's actually working with a group of farmers. He says he has uh, a number of 40 and they have been farming uh, sustainably for the last uh, five years. So, and he has fruits and uh, a wide variety of crops. So I'm excited. I, we have agreed I'll visit his farm and see the rest of the farmers. He's their chairman. So I'm looking forward to that so that we can create a partnership that can be of mutual benefit as we struggle to feed people with clean food, food that is organically grown and prepared in a way that is healthy for human consumption. Samuel may have had success marketing his produce at Bridges Organic Restaurant, but his farm is less than 100 kilometers from a major urban center. He literally can hop onto public transport to get his goods to the market. But back in Moiben, Jackson is going through heartbreak that's all too familiar in Kenya's farming countryside. Ni nyanya vile mimi naona hapa ina ni kitu ya kuhusunisha sana. Na ukiangalia mimi kama mkulima za ina ni discourage kwa sababu ya kupoteza mali kama haya. Ukumbuke Isi tume tumia dawa tume involve a lot of farming boots na pia human labor ukiangalia sasa vile inapotea hivi ni hasara kubwa sana mimi kama hii serikali yetu ya county government kama ungetuwekea cold stores at least tungefuna tuweke tukingoja soko Lakini sasa ukiangalia hapa wasingishu ni ile tu county government hawajatilia manani hata kuangalia wakulima wadogo wadogo. Jackson was unable to market his produce due to poor road network. The roads are impassable when it rains. Eh hizi eh vile tulikuwa sasa makari juzi. Hizi sikaanza kuharibika kwa shamba. Na atunge wacha atunge hasa kuachilia kwa shamba kwa sababu inaharibu sile singine. So huwa inatolewa yote hata ile imekuwa overrive inaletwa nje. Jackson is counting huge losses. Farming boots ile tunatumia kama mbolea ya kupanda, mbolea ile ya kutop dress, e, dawa ya best na pia ile madawa ya makonjwa ina karimu kwa eka moja ina cost over 230000 to 2240 kuongeza maji usisahau maji kwa sababu tunanunua mafuta na mtu hata yakunyunyiza eh kama hii yenye unaona hapa chini ina cost over 100000 na ujue hii ni in 3 days baada ya kesho kuna singine so unaona rafiki yangu ni asara kubwa tunapata sisi hapa kama wakulima wa wasingishu. We were expecting to get 1.3 which is abnormal profit in, in fact my friend. But now tumepoteza ile initial capital na ile tulikuwa tunatarajia pia hatukupata. 
na unajua usipoweza kufaulu ile manifesto ya chupili ya kuweka chakula hiyo tayari tumeanguka to minimize the loss Jackson has allowed tomato retailers into his farm wao ndio wametusaidia kwa ile njia wameweza wanachukua nyanya haya tunapima sasa hii tunausa siling mia saba kwa ikre moja wanaenda kuitembesa kwa huko homesteads it was tough to hear what jackson had to say much less interview him in a field of rotten tomatoes his produce mainly is for the local market which he always does in taxes but do farmers who export their produce have better access to international markets If you look at the, our export, our horticultural exports, for example, last year, we had quite a substantial rejections uh, of uh, horticultural exports, mainly because of the uh, maximum residue levels that were more than what is allowed in the EU. And uh, that is on the export side. How about what we are consuming as Kenyans? Who does that monitoring? At the moment, nobody is doing. I mean, uh, is uh, doing that monitoring. And the few studies that have been done, uh, all of them, if not most, uh, most of them, if not all of them, have showed very high levels of pesticide residues in the products in our markets. In the 80s, we used to say, and 90s, we used to say that for every five uh, household, one is either infected or affected by HIV. Today. It's for every household you know, there's someone who, is, who has a lifestyle condition. And there's a strong, very strong link between food and disease, and food and those non-communicable diseases. And uh, this uh, scientific evidence that has shown that pesticides and those synthetic fertilizers uh, contribute to cancer, to those uh, diabetes, high blood pressure. Yustis Kiari is the CEO of the Kenya Organic Agriculture Network. According to him, industrial agriculture is costly compared to organic farming. If you count it in terms of uh, the use of the external inputs, you also count in terms of the pesticide residues that are in those products and the, the effects on the environment of using those uh, uh, chemicals on the farm in terms of uh, uh, how they degrade the environment, how they kill pollinators. If you add all those costs, the chip becomes very expensive. In 2018, the European Commission banned three of the world's most widely used active ingredients in insecticides. They were the amidoxam, imidacloprid, and clothianidine. The three were said to be a risk to bees and other pollinators. There is no actual usage data of different pesticides in this country. Not only in this country, many, many African countries, also many, many European countries. Pesticide usage data are in general very rare. So we don't know what the people are using unless we go to the farming communities and ask them. But what we know is that they registered. Um, by the government in this country. So why they still registered, we don't know. <laughs> Apart from Roundup and few other products, many of the glyphosate-based products registered by PCPB are used to control weed in non-cropped areas. But this doesn't lessen the harmful effects of glyphosate. Alva and Alberta Piliud, a couple in the US, contracted cancer after using Roundup for more than 30 years landscaping their home and other properties. The two so far have received the largest verdict of two billion US dollars damages against Monsanto. Here yeah, really we sympathize with the situation and we also ask that we need to find more information. Is it really true? So the jurisdictions we ask to give us this information is the same science. Okay? Science give us this information. Pesticides are not the key to food security as the chemical industry would have many of us believe. Let me break it down for you. Much of the food we eat relies on bees and other pollinators to produce. When a bee lands on a flowering plant, it collects pollen from the male part of the flower and transfers it to the female part of the flower. It takes just one grain of pollen to make a seed in a plant. 
this results in the food that we eat. We, in turn, are responsible for taking care of the bees, other pollinators, and the environment. The cycle is repeated over and over again. But when harmful pesticides are used on plants, the bees and other pollinators are affected. This minimizes chances of pollination, resulting in poor yields. This in turn forces us to look for ways to increase the yields, such as using synthetic fertilizers and more pesticides. When you use the pesticides on the, on, on, on the crops, inevitably you'll have some remnants that remain on the crop. So what MRL means is that, yes, you've detected some, but is the amount that is detected on the produce within the safety uh, level. Unfortunately, the monitoring of maximum residue levels in Kenya mainly focuses on exports. For the national market, actually, no one is looking at the MILs. And this is quite a bit of a problem, because if you, for example, look at MILs of glyphosate in maize, so we know the MIL, they calculated on the base of how much a European person, for example, how much maize a European person is eating. And based on that, the maximum of glyphosate is allowed in that maize. But that means if you eat more maize, then the level of MIL should go down. Um, which means for Kenyans, being maize is being one of the staple foods, the MRL should be much lower than uh, for Europe, which is not the case. And it's not maize alone whose safety Kenyans should be worried about. The Kenya Bureau of Standards is on the spot for releasing 23,000 tons of this uh, fresh ginger, apparently, that was imported from Vietnam. Well, Kebs issued a certificate of conformity despite condemnation by the Porth Health Services, which raised concerns over the safety of that consignment. Many farmers also don't really understand why they should change. And um, I normally not talk about pesticides when we talk about how do we implement organic farming. I rather talk to them about how is your soil doing? And they all say it's bad. So why is it bad? Obviously because of the artificial fertilizers, the pesticides, the digging, um, all these things which are not good for the soil. And the most important thing is good soil. If you have good soil, you have a good healthy plant and this plant is not going to be attacked by pests so often. Um, so I'd rather go that angle instead of saying, oh no, no, don't use pesticides, they're bad. Leila Liptrau is the project lead at the Route to Food initiative. She was part of the team that produced the report on pesticides. We really need to consider how we're making organic produce mostly affordable and available in domestic markets. Um, we should not be having to buy food in local markets at our Mamba Moga that, is, uh, that has pesticide residue levels that are exceeding um, minimum acceptable standards. Uh, th th that's a serious concern. So we need to look at how can we create a, a self-containing food system um, using, using uh, sustainable farming practices uh, and therefore producing foods that are healthy and nutritious for us to eat. It's high time that the relevant authorities uh, took this up and we not only do the uh, regular monitoring for the export-oriented uh, 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 products but also for the local market that we protect Kenyan consumer into what they are eating uh, by regulating the products that are being used on farm and the levels uh, that are allowed to be in the markets the levels of mass, uh, pesticide residues are allowed in the, uh, in the market. We are aware that there will be going to be an increased awareness for farmers. Consumers are becoming more aware. And they will demand, they will continue demanding safer foods. Forget about the export, even locally here. People, we are totally we are sensitizing people, going to demand safer foods. And these safer foods will call for use of safer products. Over the time I spent with farmers, I discovered serious weaknesses with Kenya's food system that should worry you. Our soils are not as healthy as they used to be. The farming practices being aggressively pushed to farmers are not only unsustainable, but harmful in the long run. 
Many food markets and sheds of our supermarkets are filled with produce whose origin and safety you can't be very sure about. We are now in a rainy season, but what fortunes will the rain bring if reports of increased pesticide imports, some of which are harmful to us, continue to be ignored or downplayed? You may not feel the pressure of these challenges while staring at your plate of food, but soon enough you will. It is time that we who eat food grown in our borders start taking more interest in how it is grown and how it reaches our tables. Organizations charged with ensuring we eat healthily, namely the Pest Control Products Board, the Ministry of Agriculture, the Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Service, and the Kenya Bureau of Standards must be open, honest, transparent, and take the initiative to see better farming practices, better access to markets, and ultimately healthier foods. What is waiting to germinate if this doesn't happen is a bitter harvest for us all.